But so there you go. That's that's the backstory, folks. That those that is definitely a, a real challenge uh, here running a business in Portugal, and hopefully that will change. And we are delighted to be associated with a number of great entrepreneurs here in Portugal who are doing their best to change that. Nuno Mendes comes to mind. Uh, he he too is uh, has created an incredible work culture, and I'm sure he's uh, faced the same things as you. And you are doing the same thing as a. A young entrepreneur, and I don't mean that in a patronizing way, uh, Anna. You are mm -hmm. quite incredible, I've got to say. So let me uh, balance that a little bit, if I may, uh, with some of the trials and tribulations you speak of, with a, a great respect. And um, I'm, I'm I'm deeply impressed by the fact that with all that you've said, you still have gone ahead and hired a team of ten to serve the needs of people coming to Portugal. So how's that going? Um, I, you know, I know that's, you, you describe what's going on behind the scenes, but front of house, working with people, you get the most fantastic reviews. So who, what have you been doing recently to help people move to Portugal? Actually, I've been working on your idea. So I am really? trying to figure out <laughs> how I can start a helpline for people coming to Portugal. And um, I'm also yeah. talking to someone about creating um, a more in-depth move to Portugal uh, course that also works around our way of working. So explaining a bit of the different locations and all of that to try and help people make their decisions location-wise and lifestyle-wise. Uh, but those are both a work in progress. Brilliant. I think the helpline will be possible to be running uh, before. And I do like your idea of making um, a test. So making it uh, a better uh, a better trial with like 10 or 20 people to just see how uh, what people want and what people ask and what people need support with. So we can then better prepare cool. to make it a bigger thing. Um, yeah. Yes, I definitely understand how Portuguese bureaucracy and services can be a pain, and lots of people probably need support with that. <laughs> well, you're you're used to it, aren't you? To some extent, you've grown up with it, and um, you know it comes as a shock to people because it's different to what they're used to, and they're also in quite a raw and uh, fresh state. We can put it like that, can't we? They're naive and new and green. And uh, when you get uh, a little bit of a, a difficulty at Finances or CEF, it can be quite a curveball for people. So is it all right in that case to talk a little bit about this idea that you just yes, referred to? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. um, because um, it strikes me, and we had a bit of a conversation yesterday about, um, you know, the bit after you've arrived. You know, they're, they're, let's face it, there are, there, there are more and more people uh, moving into the the world of uh, helping people move to Portugal, um, it's becoming uh, you know not crowded a crowded marketplace. But you know there's a lot there are a lot of people that who've come who who uh, have personal experience to 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 reflect upon and and to share with other people. So understandably, people more and more people are getting into the, this industry, mm -hmm. and the bit that's missing potentially possibly is the bit that comes after. And we referred to it from a different angle yesterday with uh, Fabrizio and Ian, is that anticlimax or the lull after you've moved, what happens then? And that's when I think there, 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 are, there is a space for, for help uh, that's required. And, you know, Anna's told us here, she's got 10 people, she's got a team of people who, who know about how to live here in Portugal. They know how to get you here and then they can help you once you've got here. And there might be a helpline, there might be a support system for people who are just basically lose it uh, stood outside finances or Seth one morning and need to call somebody to get help. So that's the, that's the gist of it, is it, Anna? Yeah, and I sometimes hear the most ridiculous stories. Just last week, one of my uh, employees were say, telling me that she was in uh, finances and uh, someone that she knew spoke English, the, the finances person, was refusing to speak English to an elderly lady saying that she, if she was in Portugal, she had to speak Portuguese which is, well, okay, but, you know, you don't need to make things hard just for the sake of making it hard, you know? <laughs> yeah, she must have been having a bad day, right? And this does happen, of course. You know, people are people, and it's uh, perhaps only human sometimes um, that it happens like that. But if you if it does happen to you, wouldn't it be great to have a helpline to call? So are you actively looking for 10... Guinea pigs probably isn't the right word, but like a, a beta testers. Are you looking yes, for Yes, I definitely am. And if you are interested, feel free to just send us a, an email or just say hi and say, okay, I would like to sign up for that. I'm okay. still not fully sure. Probably on the, um, the beta phase, we will be doing something like 60 euros a month. 
Uh -huh. And then because probably the beta phase will be um, will be email and texts because yeah. we cannot, uh, well, we can, but it takes longer to set up, you know, a phone line and get yep. things uh, running internally. And that will give you a, a, give us a better idea to make uh, protocols and uh, replies and get the FAQs in order to then start getting the live calls kind of thing. Very so good. it will be mostly text and email for the beta. And yeah. then once that is done, and hopefully we have a, um, a good idea of the kind of how many, you know, how much people and how often they call the helpline, how, uh, how, what kind of things they need help with most often, mm -hmm. then we can create the um, proper helpline for people actually calling and speaking to someone uh, uh, because that is harder to set up. Brilliant. I, I love it. So did you say 66 zero euros for a monthly subscription as a starting point? Yeah, I said 60, so six zero. Okay. okay. And Anna at SavvyCatRealty.com if people want to drop you an email to show you their interest. Well, it's contact at SavvyCatRealty.com. Just saying that, yes, I would be interested in being a beta tester for this helpline. And yep. uh, we will set you up. And once we have the beta running, we will let you know. You need all the help you can get, I, I would say, as, as somebody who's been in this situation of, of being in some quite scary, I mean, you know, not life and death, really, but it does feel like it sometimes when your future is premised on a difficult meeting that you're having or about to have or mm -hmm. just had and you didn't understand what the hell was going on. Mm -hmm. If you could call somebody uh, to get some help with that, uh, I think that's that will be a great service. No, um, and I, I think it's an incredible brave thing to do to move to a different country that doesn't even speak your language. I know that Portugal, nowadays, most of the people speak English, which makes it a lot easier, but... It's not everyone. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. And your, you know, the pockets of Portugal, northern and central Portugal, where that, where um, you need to really brush up your Portuguese. But you're probably not going to be fluent, to be fair, on arrival. That's that's one of the ironies. Oh, it's, it's going to take a long time to be fluent unless you were practicing before. As someone exactly. who has been in Portugal for quite a while, you probably already know that Portugal is Portuguese is not an easy language. <laughs> quite, quite. So a little bit of help is 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 useful. So if you want to take part in that beta test uh, with Savvy Cat, you know what to do. Contact at Savvy Cat Realty. Dot com loving that and uh, uh, in your monthly residency here it'll be lovely to see how that's shaping up because often with your beta testing something you you have an idea don't you of what the product should be which is from your point of view but it's in working with people and this is the, the you know a, a small group of people in the first phase of this you'll really find out what they want from this and these yeah. are things you you can't this is how real innovation works i think is working with customers and clients to see from their point of view what's really going to work so good luck with that love that um we'll and come I back do have something else to kind of announce and oh, that is that we have our silver coast meeting set up and it will be on the 11th of August at midday and a half in the restaurant called Umelhu. I'm going to leave you here the link uh, for signups. Yeah. And um, it's uh, the second time we are hosting this type of event. The first one was in Lisbon and we had stellar feedback. As you know, I'm quite a foodie, so we kind of prepared the whole Portuguese party style of thing. So, you know, the Portuguese food party where you start eating at midday and you stop eating at four and there's kind of six dishes through the middle and everyone talks and drinks and so on. It's pretty much that kind of thing. And both me and the local agent, Diana, will be present. And yeah. we would like to we would love to have you since it's in your area, too. I would. I'll. I will be there if I'm. If I'm not booked already, I will be there. Eleventh of August, did you say? Yes. And at half twelve. Um, and uh, if you go to the link on the screen, you will see yes. the details. You of will this see the product. menu, the location, the price is currently at forty nine ninety. And like I said, this is pretty much a six course meal. Whoa. So we will have uh, bread and olives for entrance, and then um, the charcuterie and cheese boards and. Uh, Garlic shrimps or prawns. I think it's oh, prawns. Oh, yes, come on. Yep. And then that, you have polvo oh, yeah. alla for the fish dish. Oh, you yes. have beef uh, a casa, so beef omel, so that's the, the house steak 
for the meat dish, and oh you have goodness. a dessert buffet. So oh it's my goodness. one of those, it's... you know, one meal for the whole day style kind of thing. Yeah, and intermittent <laughs> fasting uh, from five and o'clock. And you yeah. also can use a discount code to give you a 10% discount for those that are signing up through uh, our clients or through here, through Good Morning Portugal. You can use a discount code that is SILVER10 and uh, get a 10% discount on the uh, tickets for the event. Silver and the, and the number 10? Yes, Silver okay, 10. Okay, how about that? So you've got the link to go to there. A Silver 10 will get you an extra discount. Love it. That's very generous of you. Thank you so much, Anna. And uh, tell us a little bit more about the restaurant, if you will. Uh, Deanna picked it. So that's our local age.